what is the role of governments in enabling high integrity voluntary carbon markets which help deliver on the Paris Agreement goals. We managed to introduce market instruments in that law to make the decision on whether which sector, which type of project should be uh, used for, for the voluntary carbon market. Providing readiness support to countries um, on carbon markets, carbon pricing, uh, com setting up domestic compliance markets, and more recently, of course, on Article 6. We are now translating for adaptation because we have faced the same challenge as we did uh, for mitigation 20 years ago. Not to change uh, the system but more to do an institutional change. To quantify impacts in order to push um, forward adaptation-based mechanisms. I'm really happy to see almost 100 people in Article 6.8 <laughs> side event. Where should we be focusing in order to provide certainty around the legal nature of carbon credits? how to use uh, digital assets. How innovation is important and how finance is important. Innovation and, and clean tech is uh, really key to uh, succeed. By applying new technologies uh, to monitor the carbon capture. The type of the infrastructure that we have been developing because of the demand of our clients. Food and agrotech. Financial, social and environmental. How do we pay them to keep the coal on the ground? Ensuring electricity supply. If there is already an existing accounting methodology. We're helping to fund actual projects. Working in a standard in the carbon market is constant evolution. How stakeholders in developing countries navigate the political economy of carbon pricing. The impetus to try and build a coalition to expand explicit carbon pricing globally. Climate change is a key agenda that we are working on. Countries need to be ready, need to equip themselves and to uh, develop the right infrastructure. Allowing people to develop projects and mitigation activities. In fact, I think there's just more opportunities for learning. What should multilaterals and governments be doing to, to leverage in private sector investment and in climate finance. Pushing the limits when it comes to extending credit to SMEs through banks. What kind of de-risking instrument then do you need to put together to be able to expand your participation uh, in, in SME? You actually cannot separate, in, in our view, kind of climate finance and, and almost an advisory element. Who considers themselves a practitioner of social inclusion or gender? Okay. You cannot have a just transition which is not fair or inclusive. The importance of those investments to deliver climate outcomes and promote gender equality and women's empowerment. In order to raise awareness and advocacy and funding for both community-based organizations, women-led businesses, investment vehicles. We provided our capital on the basis that these cook stoves will then generate carbon credits. To give grants to women-led organizations um, that are working in the coal transition to give them a voice. Techniques that are not intensive in, in capital, but are very intensive in knowledge. There's a need for a lot of capacity building. The actual uh, beneficiaries of those carbon credits still get a fair share of it. Raising awareness among policymakers, financial organizations, farmers, consumers. And looking finance for climate adaptation and biodiversity. Taking biodiversity and climate crisis together and they combine its social impact. I think we need to look at global goals. Try to stay below 1.5 uh, degrees. You need the champions that drive the policy forward. 